Hi and welcome to our Wednesday evening webinar. Thank you for joining me. I'm Pam Wrigley and um, I'm a makeup artist and hairstylist. I specialise in weddings, just in case you haven't uh, worked with me before. Um, and tonight I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful, soft, textured ponytail. I've already done some hair prep on our practice head and I've decided to go for some beachy waves today. Um, so I'm going to talk you through step by step how to create this style. If you have any questions, please just type your questions in the chat box and my beautiful assistant just off camera will read out your questions to me and hopefully I'll be able to answer them. But if I can't, I'll be able to get back to you certainly by tomorrow. Um, that's if I'm not, you know, if I don't know the answer, I will look it up. If you're asking about any particular products or anything, just ask, feel free to ask. It could be a question about tonight's style or it could be a question about products or about anything about bridal hairstyling or hairstyling for parties, hair up in general. That's my thing. Okay, so any questions? please just ask. Thank you again for joining me. Let's get started. Now I'm working with a mirror just off camera here and I find it really helps. So when you're working with your clients or even if at the moment you're working with your practice head, like I am tonight, it's still really handy and you'll find it very helpful if you have a mirror that you can, you can work with as you create your style because it kind of gives you the ability to step back and to see the style from a different angle. So it's, it's useful, you want to kind of try and get used to kind of having eyes all around the style so you can see it from different angles. Um, or else, you know, you can be creating something that looks fantastic at the front or you think it's all lovely and wide and soft and gorgeous, but then it doesn't suit your client from the from the front there. So you don't just want it to look great at the back or from the sides, it's gotta look great everywhere okay and it will also give your client a little bit of extra confidence as well if she can see the style you're creating in the mirror so let's get started so I have already she's already been texturized this practice head and she does have a few extensions in here because it's quite short the hair on this practice head um, and the extensions I've got I'm using these are from American Dream um, but there are lots of places that you can buy extensions from these are real hair extensions and I really love these particular ones um, I'm not quite sure if uh, you joined us last week we did a beautiful textured bun on a practice head that did have some extensions in now these extensions are actually a color match. They're a really good color match for the hair on the practice head. Whereas the ones we used last week were a different color and it kind of gave a little bit of contrast to the style. So don't panic if when you're, if whilst you're practicing, your extensions aren't an exact color match because you might find it might just help to make the style a bit more kind of photographable, okay? So um, I have, the hair's been crimped and also, um, oh, and I used the product I used with the crimping was the Urban uh, Fudge Urban Sea Salt Spray. Um, one of my other favorite ones is the L'Oreal Beachy Waves. So texturized the hair, crimped the hair, done some beachy waves in the hair. Now we did, on a previous tutorial, uh, we did cover beachy waves. If you're not sure, our online students, so we have our online training course where we have everything kind of covered, um, all the different hair prep techniques, curling techniques, blow dry, rollers, everything um, that you might need to know with regard to hair prep, all available on our online training courses. If you're not sure, our students can have a look at the full length HD tutorials on our online training platform or if you join us on YouTube we did have a live tutorial the other week where we covered Beachy Wave so please just refer back to that if you're not sure how to create this beautiful kind of Beachy Wave effect. So the extensions I've put in 
I have started kind of below the crown. Now these extensions don't didn't have clips on them. So I've had to grip them into place, um, but they still work, especially they're great really, I think for when you're doing photo shoots and videos. Um, maybe not ideal for a wedding day. You may want to buy them with the clips already on if you're working with somebody on their wedding day. But basically because we're doing a ponytail and we want a little bit of height here, I have kept the extensions below the crown and at the nape of the neck, I haven't put any clothes to the nape of the neck here. They start a little bit higher up, just up there, so we can lift the hair up a bit here and the extensions aren't visible. So once you've done the hair prep, this hairstyle is actually relatively speedy. So we're going to bring, get our section on our crown. Now if you want to, you could put a little bit of back combing on the section at the back here. Just a little bit, if you want a little bit of height, that is. Just a tiny touch, I think. And I might use a little bit of my Super Ego Structure Cream. And just create some nice PC sections on the crown. And you can see how the hair's kind of standing up nicely because it's been crimped and curled and it also has a little bit of texture spray on there so once you've got that texture in the hair we have got a little bit of back combing in there but only a tiny touch and really it's the it's the salt spray and the crimping that mean you get that lovely kind of uh salty textured feeling to the hair so Let's see. Now, if you've joined me before on our e-learning tutorials or our YouTube tutorials, we also put these tutorials out on Facebook. But you might know sometimes when I'm creating these styles and I stand at the side, sometimes the styles can be a little bit kind of lopsided. So make sure when you're creating your styles that you stand nice and centrally at the back so you get a nice even style. Here we go. I'm going to use the mirror again and just lift up a little bit of this hair. So, you know, you can play with this. Some of your clients might want, might prefer the hair to be a bit smoother. Some clients might want more texture. So find out what your client wants and everybody's different. So I think that's enough for this particular style. So it looks lovely from the back. Let me just check from the side. Yeah, that's good. And I'm not worried too much about these extensions that are visible here at the side because that will all be taken care of shortly. So I'll just get a couple of bobby pins and pop them at the back here. Nice and secure. So, so I hope you've had a good week. I know that here in the UK, so we're based in London and we have, I think all our rules are changing again this week so weddings are still able to go ahead of up to 30 people but I think at home we've got to, we've got to reduce I think down to six like a little bubble of six people I think that's the plan but um, wherever you are I hope you're staying safe and I know certainly that's it I'm just putting a little bit more of this structure cream on these little pieces sections just to help give that a little bit more movement, just because I think it looks gorgeous. So I know, certainly for me, my weddings have really picked up, so I'm really pleased about that. Our subscribers on YouTube are fabulous, so we're over 11,000 now. So if you're not already a subscriber and you enjoy these tutorials, please like and subscribe hit that notification bell and then you'll never miss a tutorial. Okay, so now I'm not too worried about these little short bits, but what I am gonna do is I'm going to pick up some hair here and I'm gonna create a ponytail just about here. Now I always think the thing with a ponytail is to try and keep it looking simple and effortless, but special at the same time. So 
I'm going to make the ponytail look a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. So it looks like she's got lots of hair. And I think this is especially important. I mean, I'm using these extensions here at the moment. But if you're not using extensions, then this little trick that I'm going to show you now is a great way to make the hair look a lot thicker. So you can decide where you want to have your ponytail. So I'm kind of going to go kind of at the center here at the back, but you could go a little bit lower. You could even go higher. But now let's get our next section. So we've got one ponytail first here, and then I'm going to create another ponytail here, but just underneath this one. Let me make sure we cover these extensions up here so we don't want any of this to be visible. So I'll pop that in. So again, if you have any questions or any styles that you'd like me to cover, please just get in touch. That's it. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to leave these front sections down here and I'm just going to lift up. Let me just pop that out of the way for a minute. I think we've got a question. Maria says, as we enter into autumn and winter, are there any autumn wintry stars that you know of? I think that it's still, a lot of the stars are very kind of, still very soft and relaxed looking. I think half up, half down stars are still super popular. And I have recently actually, one of the reasons why I'm doing the ponytail is my client, I've got a bride who's getting married on Saturday, and she is actually going to go for a ponytail. We're not going to do the beachy waves. She just wants a soft kind of almost curl. So um, I think that styles are still very soft and relaxed. She wants all her bridesmaids are going to be having little, she's having a ponytail and they're all having half up, half down styles. So I think through the winter and definitely into the spring, it's still going to be very soft relaxed styles. I haven't really been doing very many braids, I have to say, on brides uh, recently. Um, but we'll see if next year proves, you know, to be different and they kind of come back again. So um, very, I would say, soft, relaxed and gorgeous and lots of fresh flowers. So now I'm going to do another ponytail just beneath the top one. So when we join them together, it's going to look kind of wide. It's going to make it make it look like a really fat, gorgeous ponytail. Now I want these ponytails to sit quite close together. So I need to, instead of putting the ponytail on this way, I need to put the, the band on this way. So it kind of lifts up the hair a little bit. And I think you'll find as well, if you if you want the hair to be quite tight at the bottom here, if you get your client, it's not so, it's easy with a head, but if you get your client to look up a little bit, you'll find you'll get, it gets a little bit tighter near the nape of the neck. That's it, make sure none of these extensions are showing. And then the elastic bands I'm using are these little kind of snag-free elastic bands. Let's get that up close to the other ponytail. So that's the neck here. That's it. So it almost looks like one ponytail, but a fat ponytail. That should do it. Fat. Great. Let's bring that back down again. Lovely. Just bring that along to the side just a little bit. Widen it a touch. So we're going to get rid of some of these little short bits here. So you could, of course, change the curl that you've got going, you know, here in the ponytail. I do think a beachy wave looks really pretty. But the choice is yours or your clients. And then we can wrap this little short bit around. I might bring it around this side actually, I might do a little bit of each. And remember we still have this hair that we're going to come back and play with. So if now your client, you know, we've got some extensions in here. 
But if your lady didn't have very much hair, you know, the, the ponytail was still a little bit thin, you could just lift up the hair and just pop a little bit of back combing in the middle of the ponytail and it will just give that impression of extra kind of volume and bulk. I want to smooth these bits down. But yeah, I think it's going to definitely stay very soft and relaxed as far as the winter styles and next year's styles are concerned. Because of course, most of this year's, you know, weddings have all been kind of cancelled. So the dresses that people were going to wear this year, they're now going to be wearing next year. So I might just wrap that around. Lovely. So this year, for example, I probably, I think I've done maybe four weddings. And I think all my other weddings were, have been rebooked for next year. So, you know, all those brides that would normally, I'm probably doing that many weddings in a week. So next year we are going to be incredibly busy. That much I do know. So when you wrap this around... That's it. You want to keep, have it kind of tight, not so that it doesn't look, you want it tight so it looks like one ponytail, but not, you know, not so tight that it makes it like a really small ponytail. That's it, let's wrap that around and pop a little grip on it. So here I'm just using those shorter bits of hair that we had left here. So it doesn't need a lot of hair here. That's it, pop that in there to wrap around and cover the band. We've still got our little bits here to play with. And she might want a few little bits down so you can have a little play with that. Bring these other sections back. And I'm gonna keep them in their little twists and bring them round and back. and create this lovely, textured, gorgeous, beachy looking ponytail. But equally, as I say, you could make this a little bit more glamorous, maybe by doing a different kind of curl. So you could use the bride that I'm working with at the weekend is having a lovely ponytail and she is going to have a very soft kind of barely curl to the hair and I'm using the traditional wind for that particular bride. So the traditional wind is where I curl the hair from the end using the tongs and I wind the kind of the hair up the tongue that way so that we get a nice curl at the end but just a bit of movement higher up with the hair. So it's very kind of barely styled and I think it can look really glamorous with the right dress okay so you can see how quick this style is once you've done the hair prep because we're almost there i've got another question lucy says how long does the hair prep take you ah now that is a good question so i would say i allowed including the crimping and the curling i have probably took 50 minutes to prep the hair. So, um, and the, we've got the extensions in. So I'll probably say, so I wouldn't feel rushed on the wedding day. I would give for this particular lady, I would probably do an hour. So I'm just bringing these sections back and just securing them just underneath. So I've left a little bit down. So yeah, I've left a, a good hour for the hair prep. So when I'm working with a bride, when I've done a trial run, I always, let me just show you what I'm doing here. I'm just bring, bringing this around. So I still have this piece to hide and I'm just working with the sections that I've just brought back here. And I'm just going to wrap this around. But when I do a trial run, I always allow plenty of time. I, t I allow time at the end of the trial, just wrapping a bobby pin around there and popping that in. So I allow time at the end of the trial so I can write everything up and work out all the timings so that then on the wedding day, I know exactly what time I have to arrive. We just turn her around and let's do this side. So we've still got a bobby pin visible here. We've still got some short hair here. And let's bring a little bit of this back. 
So, yeah, I always like to allow plenty of time. Maybe had I not been mm, so busy looking in the mirror and I looked at this side a little bit more, then I might have left a little bit more hair down. But I think it's been pulled back into the ponytail now. But, yes, I always like to work out my timings quite precisely so that I have plenty of time on the wedding day because this is a fabulous job to do. But it's, it, and it's only stressful if you are running short of time. So the one thing I would say is always give yourselves plenty of time for the hair prep and for the finishing off of the styles. Yeah, that's nice, I think. I might just see what it's like to loosen this out a little bit and I usually write everything down so I have these little wedding planners that I write everything down on so you can take photographs when you do a trial but be careful if you just take pictures because what you tend to get when you take photographs she's got like a bit of cream on her face there <laughs> what you tend to get when you take photographs you get after the trial is you get the finished result. And of course, if you go back then six months later, or for some of my brides who had their trial maybe in March this year and were originally getting married in the summer, so July or August, they're now getting married next year. So I've got a good 15 months before their wedding next year. So if you've just taken photographs and you only see the end result, then it's very hard when you go back to just look at that picture and work out exactly how you've created that style. So make sure you don't just take photographs, make sure you take really detailed notes so you know step by step where she wants her parting, how much hair she has down, what curl technique you use, what products you use, every detail. And that is what makes your life easier. And it makes you into a fabulous bridal hairstylist. So we've got one more question. Yes, um, Lucy was asking what specific notebook do you write that down? In ah. Do well, I actually designed it myself because before I started doing weddings, I used to do lots of film and TV work, mainly TV commercials. So we have our little planner sheets, but I adapted it so you know exactly what everybody has. So I adapted that for working to work with my bride. So we actually have them available on our um, website, on Create Beautiful Hair website um, in the shop. We've got our little wedding planners available on there, but you could design your own. So basically what they are, they're like, and I personally, I like to write everything down. So some people, you, there are, there's an app called, I think it's Beauty Pro, I think. I'll find out. Um, there's an app that you can use. You can write everything down. You have it all in your phone. But I actually like to write everything down. So I've got a hard copy and I've got the photographs on my phone. And... Um, and the, the little sheets that we have also have, um, I'm just working out where to pin this so I can talk and style. They also have a little photocopy sheet underneath. So then when the bride pays the deposit, she gets a little photocopy sheet so that she has a copy of everything I've done as well as me. So if anything happens to that piece of paper, that little plan, she's got a, a copy as well. And that, then that way I know that whatever happens on the day, she's got a copy of everything, you know, the timings, the style, the prep. And it has little pictures on it, little diagrams where I draw my little sketch of, of my bride's hair. So I find them invaluable, actually, to be honest with you. I think we're almost there. Another question? Yes. Natalie says, she's right-handed. Would, would you suggest working clockwise or anti-clockwise with this style? Oh, well, you see, I've, it doesn't matter. I've done one of these sections I took one way and one the other. So really what you want to look at when you're creating these styles and when you're working with the hair is kind of seeing what the hair wants to do. Because I know certainly when I first started, I think I probably made the mistake of thinking like beforehand, I think like, I know exactly what I'm going to do and this is what I'm going to do with the hair and this is how the hair is going to behave. This is the style I want to do, especially if I was working on set. And you know, I soon realized that actually 
hair styles and hair works much better when you work with the hair. So when you follow the flow, see where the hair wants to go. Sometimes when I arrive at people's houses and they'll say, you know, what, what are you going to do to my hair? And at first I used to kind of think I needed to have an answer. I think sometimes when we first begin, we feel if somebody asks us a question, we should know the answer. But actually, you don't need to know the answer because that's what the trial is there for. So quite often I'll say, you know, I have no idea what I'm going to do till I get my hands in your hair and I can put my, you know, I can see what your hair wants to do. So really, rather than thinking about it as to what you can what you know which way around your hands work best you might find it better if you think what does the hair want to do and then learn you'll soon learn how to do the same thing with both hands so I can kind of work it sometimes it's tricky working from you might find it easier to create a Dutch braid on one side than it is on the other side but it's really it is just practice so um, I'm just going to come in and loosen a few things here because I think it could actually be gorgeous just like this, but we could loosen it a little bit. Let's see if we like it. Just give it a little bit more texture and a bit more shape. So um, we have to be careful, of course. We've got our extensions under here. So we want to make sure they stay covered. But... Um, yeah, just learn to work with the hair. And you might find it easier. Another thing I quite often say to my students when you first begin is sometimes it's easier if there's a bit of a curl in the hair. I think when you first begin, it can be tricky if you want to create styles with poker straight hair because you kind of have to make all the decisions about where the hair is going to go. Whereas if you put a bit of a curl in the hair or a bit of movement in the hair, then the hair kind of tells you where it wants to go, okay? So you'll find that much easier. So if you want, we've got lots of, if we started our online training course, must be about six or seven years ago now. So we've got a lot of footage on there. There's lots of, you know, so for the last kind of six or seven years, we've been working on creating, doing different hair prep tutorials, different styles, from classic bridal styles, vintage bridal styles, quick styles, braids, blow dries, textured styles, everything. So it's not kind of a, it's not a last minute thing that we've just kind of started doing because of COVID. We've been working towards our online training course for a long time, perfecting lots of different styles. So there's lots of different things you can learn. And if you want, it, it could just be securing accessories, so getting veils in. I think we did a veil the other week, fresh flowers, tiaras, everything. So, and we've got our special offer on at the moment still. Alternatively, you could like and subscribe and follow us on YouTube or Facebook or both. I think we've finished, you know. I think our little, our gorgeous little, she's, she is one-sided, can you see? She's kind of over here. So I've been working over to this side. So she's not quite central, but she is done. She's, we've got a gorgeous textured. Might look nice, I think, if we lifted that up just a little bit. So I might just pop a little bit of back combing just underneath here. just to lift her up, that's better, just a little bit. And we've got our gorgeous, beachy, textured ponytail that you can actually adapt in different ways. Let me just pop this pin in here. You know, if you, as I say, if you did a different curl, you'd get a very different looking style. So you could make it more glamorous than beachy, if that's what your bride preferred. So I look forward to seeing you next week. If you have any style ideas, please just send your ideas in to us. Don't forget to comment and like. And if you'd like any more information, if you'd like to learn more, we have our online training course with lots of new tutorials being uploaded regularly. 
But I hope you've enjoyed tonight's quick beachy ponytail. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for joining me. Bye.